Oh, stink. I built it upside down. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. We are working on the dining room table again and we finally have the base starting to come to life. It is here, it is it's starting to work out where you can see how it's upside down right now. We'll be building the structure upside down on this basically and then taking it upstairs and, and flipping it. So today we're gonna be working on the rails, these long pieces that go to end to end and then these stretchers or styles, depending upon what you wanna call them, that then connect the rails together. This will be what actually the table sits on and is supporting the whole weight. If you wanna follow along, I have plans on my website so you can uh, look at that and see all the measurements and details and everything for that. And thank you to those of you who have purchased them already. Uh, you are making Wood by Right what it is today. I don't have any sponsorships on here, so I'm completely supported by you uh, when you purchase, you know, t-shirts and card scrapers and things like that on my website as well as plans. Thank you for that. But enough of that, let's dive into the project. On the ends of all these rails, styles, and many of the other pieces, there is this angle uh, set that's just more or less an artistic angle. And to duplicate that onto all the pieces it needs to be, I'm just going to lay out from the designs a paper pattern. And I find it easier to cut out a paper pattern and trace that onto the wood than trying to lay it out onto the wood in each and every piece. This way I can guarantee that all of the angles are the same on any particular piece. Even though they're different from rail to rail, um, on one particular set of rails they're all the same. So after laying out these lines then we can take it over to the saw and cut it out. This is uh, a little bit more of the exact same thing if you've been watching the series using a handsaw, but this time it's your friend. <laughs> but uh, cutting down the ends of these boards, not that big a deal, it takes only a few minutes. Then bring it back over to the bench and plane it off, and this is where everything starts to get happy. I love the end grain, the, the shape and the color on this elm is fantastic. It's not the easiest wood to work with, but it's not bad. And uh, I'm, I'm really kind of starting to like it. it, it's getting a good place in my heart. After cutting one end, then we can mark out the length of this. Yes, I know I'm using this weird device called a tape measure, but it gives me an actual length so I can make sure that these are uh, matching the, pan the plans. Once I have all of them cut to length and the ends done on both of them, I can clamp them together and lay out the joints. Now I want to be very careful here to make sure that all the joints um, are at the exact same distance apart. And I don't care what that distance is exactly as long as they all match. So that's why I can clamp them together and cut both of the joints at the same time. And then because it needs to match this stretcher piece, I'm going to use the stretcher as the width marker and I know that my lines are precisely apart the same width as the stretcher. When I bring the saw in, cut to the line, then I know that the gap left between the two lines will fit that stretcher perfectly, not have to go to any particular plans. And this is really one of my favorite parts once I've cut down either side to bring a chisel in and to chop out the waste. Not quite sure why it's so much fun, but it's very enjoyable and very ah, stress reliever, relaxing to see these large chips comes out. As long as you take your time and be careful, uh, the, you never quite know where the grain will run on this and you may end up um, going down the wrong direction. But if you're aiming up and away from your work, then you can work back down to that line slowly until you get right down to that line. And if in doubt, leave a little bit extra because when it comes time to actually do the joinery between the two pieces, then you can finesse the line and make it perfect. Now we're gonna move on to the stretchers that go between those long rails. And it's gonna be basically the exact same thing we just did before cut one end with the pattern, then measure out how long the board needs to be, lay the pattern on, and cut it out. Uh, because these ones were shorter, I could actually put them in the bench vise to do the cuts. And I found that to be a little bit more comfortable personally, but uh, some people really like the saw, vi saw bench, just uh, personal taste. Then bring it back over and watch the grain on this come to life. I love that end grain swirl on this elm, just beautiful. clean up the ends, make them look pretty, and we're ready to go with the joinery. Now for all three of these stretchers, I ended up clamping those all together just like I did before, and holding them all in place guarantees that they're all the same distance apart. And then I can use another board to lay out the exact thickness of each of these joints to make sure that they then fit the board they need to go into. I'll use a straight edge uh, square to draw the lines down the surface, and then I'll grab a marking gauge and the marking gauge will then give me the depth of the cut, which on these I think is about two inches down. So they're about an inch and three quarter wide by about two inches down. Then I'm gonna come in with the saw, cut down either side. You may have seen this process before. It's gonna be basically the exact same thing throughout the rest of this because we're gonna be using this joint for a lot of the work. 
Then I can come back in for my favorite part again and clean out the joint. Take some time, don't take off too big a piece, and you'll be very happy. Uh, leave a little bit of work at the bottom because you can always take off more when it comes to the joinery than uh, adding it on is not as easy. Uh, at this point, it's very difficult for the tree to grow back a ring or two to help you out. Now we can actually get on to a very important step, and that is labeling. Uh, because throughout this whole table, we're going to be making a whole pile of these joints, and we want to make sure that they all go together. So these are the first six joints, and I'm labeling them on each piece to know that number one on one piece goes with number one on the other piece, and that way I can, I can connect them together when all the pieces get mixed up. And you heard me talking about the finessing work before. We're just going to go through and put the two pieces together and see if I need to take off a little bit more space. Do I need to take off the depth so that they fit together nicely? Bring them all down into each other. I actually end up having to do a little bit of finessing on both sides of the joint until they slide together. I don't want them to be an incredibly tight joint because they are going to be pounded together. And every time I move, um, this whole thing is designed to come apart and be held together again with gravity. So just push them down into place and be happy. Once I get all six joints together, I can lay it on the table upside down, and you can kind of get an idea of how this will then support the table that will be sitting on top of it. Very happy with how it's going so far. I have a lot more to go. So there you have it. You can see this is actually going to be a really simple build. 90% of it is just going to be these half laps that you cut down the other side, chop out the waist, and the joint is done. There are four mortise and tenons on this. Um, we'll get into those later and actually get into the detail on that. This is going to be a really fun build. On uh, the next project, we're going to be doing a little bit of fitting the tabletop uh, to the base, and then it's structure on up, or on down, depending upon how you flip the table. Um, I do want to say thank you to those of you who have purchased the plans already. They are available on my website, and uh, you are helping make Wood by Right what it is today. If you'd like to see more about that on my website, you can click the link right down here, and also you can subscribe, like, and share. That really does help the channel. So that's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.